Okay, it's five, literally five o'clock on a Friday, and I'm finishing up my cases for the week, and I had to show you guys this case because it is just an, it's very interesting, and it's also a great example of how the history and the information that the vet gives the pathologist can be vital in our interpretation. So I'm gonna take you through this case. Okay, this is a five-year-old dog who had about a one month history of one centimeter round, firm skin masses, so multiple, appearing on the outside of each pinna. So that's a big clue here, not only the location, but also that it's on both pinnae, because of course neoplasia can happen on both pinnae, but that would be odd, right? So that's a kind of first thing to think about. non pruritic not changing, everything else is normal. So I already had, something in mind when I heard this history and of course I don't get tunnel vision but it is something important to think about when you're thinking about history and you're thinking about cytology because if you have something in mind which I'm going to tell you what I had in mind you may want to be looking extra hard for those things especially if they're small and difficult to see if you're just kind of casually looking so I'm looking at these pictures that were submitted this is these were submitted through pocket pathologist which is my telecytology service and as I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know, I noticed as I was going through the pictures, like there's inflammation in here, mixed inflammation, small lymphocytes, some neutrophils, some macrophages, nothing specific, but that's, that actually fits well with what I had kind of originally wondered if this was going to be. And as I was looking, I was like, I'm going to be, I'm going to look for this thing that I think. And I was super excited because I see it. I, the vet did a great job actually capturing these. And I'm not sure if they even knew that they did, but let's look a little bit closer. So, as we're looking at these pictures, there's some artifact here, just kind of stuff on their uh, lens, but these cells are tough to make out because not they're not all intact, but like here you don't see any cytoplasm, so those aren't intact. These look like they're probably small lymphocytes, they got a little bit of cytoplasm. There's a neutrophil here and some plasma cells. So you can't really identify every single cell confidently, but there's definitely mixed inflammation here. And you know, there's some there's some protein in the background, all that purple stuff, and little bubbles, but this is when I got excited. Notice these little clear things here hanging in the background. They're not the little round things, they're long. They're kind of rod shaped. I was thinking, I bet this is gonna be what I thought it was. Look at that, but I'm not totally sold yet. I mean, I think that's probably what it is. Again, I haven't told you yet. But I'm thinking that's probably what this is, but I want to be more convinced. And as I was looking around, I kept seeing these little long rod shaped things. And then I saw this guy just hanging out in the corner here, just off the screen. There's a macrophage that inside of the cytoplasm, there are lots of those little clear rod shaped structures. That my friends is mycobacterium mycobacteria. So this dog has canine leprosy and this is actually, um, in my experience, I've seen this a number of times, and in my experience this is a common place for this to present on the pinna and it forms these little nodular ulcerated kind of oozy lesions and of course it can happen anywhere on the body and there's different types of mycobacterium and you know you can get it internally and all that stuff so there's different there's different ways this can present but when I've seen it uh, you know, in this presentation, like I've seen it present like this a number of times, both in person because when I worked in a specialty hospital, but also also through submissions sent to me. So this fits beautifully. And when I heard that history of that multifocal lesions on this dog's pinna, and then I saw the mixed inflammation, I knew I needed to look especially hard for these. And this is, you know, telecytology. So it's possible these wouldn't have been caught in one of the photos, but they're everywhere. And in my experience, um, in the cases that I've seen, I've seen that, you know, uh, that there's quite a lot of them. Um, there are cases where you really, really have to search. And of course, if you don't see them, that does not rule it out. So you always want to keep something like that uh, in mind if you ever, ever have a case like that where you think it might be mycobacterium. You should not rule it out just because you don't see them. But in this case, they're there and they were repeatable through all of these photos that were submitted so I felt really really good about this and everything fits. <sighs> what a fun case to end the week with. Hope you enjoyed it.